Hello there. I'm Teacher Im and I prepare videos to help my students score better in their STPM Maths T paper. And I hope my videos can be helpful for you too. Let's get Hi. to the topic. Welcome back. This is the second part of my video where I teach how to use a uh, limit and the arrows from the answers created from limit for sketching graph. Let's look at the examples. In this part 2, I'm going to use back the example that I used previously, but I'm going to do it in full, which means I'm going to talk about how we create a full sketch from this equation. Right, once you get the rational function, like I say in my previous video, we have to either think about the vertical asymptote, the horizontal asymptote, or maybe we have an oblique asymptote. For this case, from my previous example, we know when the numerator has higher degree than the denominator, then we actually will take it and do long division in it. So if you have no idea what long division is, I suggest you search for my video about long division. I will leave a link on top. Now, in this long division, you will create a quotient a, and a remainder. And you will put the equation and return in the format of quotient, remainder, divide by divisor. Then we will need to take this equation and look for the limit of it. Limit x moving to positive infinity or x moving to negative infinity. Have you got any idea what they are? So, what is actually the answer for limit x moving to positive infinity or negative infinity for this equation? Now remember, for the right hand side, this one over here, you will know that if the limit turns to infinity, this part will automatically turn to zero. So when we have limit going to be positive infinity means we are filling in here with lots and lots of positive answers, then our answer should be po positive value. So whatever number we get should be bigger than x plus 1. If we have numbers which are from the negative infinity. So imagine the number we, we are going to plus it, uh, negative numbers, we are going to plus it with 1. So the number that we get actually will be smaller than x plus 1. Right? It is going to be smaller. So we will put it x plus 1 left hand side or bottom. Okay, on the bottom of the graph or this one we can call it on top of the graph. Later you will see what I meant. So this one, we call it the oblique asymptote. Now let's talk about x minus 1, which is the denominator. In my previous video, we know that the denominator actually can help us calculate the vertical asymptote. So now we know our x is 1. But do you know what is the value when x comes from the right hand side and left hand side? So I have the first one done. Limit x coming from the right hand side 1 plus the right hand side of x. Then we will say that the values is positive infinity. So just imagine all the numbers supposed to have be bigger than 1. So 1 plus, it can be 1.00001, okay? But still, it is bigger than 1. So when we minus, we will get a positive answer. And with the number squared, we will get a positive answer. 
that's why we get positive infinity so if we have a lot of numbers from the right hand side of one so all the numbers are going to be positive now let's say if we put them in graphing point so you if you put in and press the calculator you will also notice that the number will get bigger as it goes now if i have one from the left hand side which means the number is from the left hand side of one means it's smaller than one if it is smaller than one if i take the number any numbers which is smaller than one i minus with one it should be a negative number at the bottom but the top one will maintain positive so a positive number divided by a negative number we actually get a negative now, if we plot it in into tables indeed you will find that the numbers will get lesser and lesser and it is going to be negative okay and we call this the vertical asymptote okay so remember the vertical asymptote we get it from the denominator okay next is we need to know all the coordinates the intersection point to the x-axis and the y-axis the maximum point or minimum point or inflection point so we do our dy over dx which is something uh, we differentiate it and we will have dy over dx equals to zero to calculate our coordinates so i will have this settled in and i have two values of x okay once i have two values of x of course this one is called the stationary point method okay we calculate the stationary point when dy dx equals to zero that's another topic we i would just use this to calculate our graph okay we need coordinates to sketch our graph so i will fill in into the y that i have the question and i will get two coordinates okay now with these two coordinates i need to check the nature of the square coordinates because i need to know whether this stationary point is a maximum point minimum point or an inflection point going to use the first derivative test you can use the second derivative test if you like but i'm not going to derive this okay i'm not going to derive this dy dx anymore so i'm just going to fit it in into this table from x equals to zero first so i need a number which is a bit less than zero and a bit more than zero I just take that number and I fill it into my dy dx and I will need to know the gradient that they create right I just need to know whether it's a positive gradient or a negative gradient right once I know that I can actually imagine my graph so from here I know this is a maximum point next one is I need to check for the second one x equals to 2 so again i'm going to use the table to help me so i have 2 from the left hand side a bit a number a small number uh, a bit more than 2 and a bit more than uh, 2 on the right hand side so i again i check for the gradient and i using this first derivative test and i will know that this is a maximum point once i got all the coordinates the and the asymptote ready i can actually start sketching this graph so i will first put my vertical asymptote x equals to one and the oblique asymptote which is y equals to x plus one okay let's check about the let's see the coordinates so i have two coordinates just now when x equals to zero and y equals to zero and i created a maximum point and i have a two value of two and four which i create a minimum point so i will mark that first okay. once i mark that 
Then I will look at my asymptote limit of the asymptote one by one. So when limit x moving to positive infinity means you are imagining all your x moving to the right hand side. Okay, it's positive infinity. You will notice that the graph is supposed to be on top of this oblique line. So the oblique asymptote, it is on top of the asymptote. That's why I need to know whether it's on top or at the bottom. Okay, so it's on top. So I will sketch a little arrow there. Then let's check out. If x is moving to negative infinity, then I have to imagine my value of x is moving to the left hand side. But this time, the graph will be at the bottom of x plus 1. So I will sketch a little arrow like so. So it's moving to the left hand side, but once it reaches this x plus 1, it will turn and go down. It will never touch the asymptote. Next, I have my limit, the vertical asymptote. So let's check the limit when x is approaching 1 from the right hand side. So x is coming from the right hand side and you will notice the answer will be positive infinity. So you imagine all the numbers coming, 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 coming from the right hand side and it becomes more and more. Okay, but it will, it will get very, very near to 1 but it will not touch 1. So our arrow are as so, okay, moving up. Next one is when limit x coming from the left hand side of 1. So we imagine all the numbers of x are coming from the left hand side of 1. And we notice that our answer is getting to negative infinity. So it will not touch x equals to 1, but it is going to go less than that. Okay, x, uh, I mean, the y value is going to be negative. So the arrows are going to go down. All right, I'm sure you can see the shape of the graph now. So if you notice, you have actually have the shape of the graph here. Let me get it out for you. Ta-da! There, that's your graph. To get the full marks, you need to label your graph. Okay, so once you label your graph, you will get the full three marks that they give in the exam paper. Alright, let's look at the next example. Let's check out the second example. Now we will go part by part for this example. The first part of the example, let's read the question. They gave you an equation, so I put it there first. They asked you to find the equation as the, of this asymptote. Okay, so we know this one confirm we will have two vertical asymptotes because I have two values at the bottom. Sometimes the questions are not well factorized for you, so it's up to you whether to set in. Okay, so it is not factorized, then you have to factorize. Okay, if it cannot be factorized, then it's very hard to sketch it, right? So that is another story. But we are now concentrating with question which we can factorize and we can find the asymptotes. Right, so I'm going to do one by one. So when x plus 1 equals to 0, I'm going to get x equals to negative 1. So by now you should know, okay, x negative 1 equals to negative 1 should be our first asymptote. Right, let's test it. So limit x moving to negative 1 so from here we get negative 1 we imagine it from the right hand side okay so all the values from the right hand side if i put a value bigger than a negative bigger than negative 1 here and then i put a value at negative 1 bigger than negative 1 here all right do what do i get okay you just imagine that it is going to be a positive value or a negative value and if we put a number which is uh, from the left uh, right hand side of one negative one sorry right hand side of negative one we put inside here are we going to get a positive value or a negative value so you just imagine a lot of numbers put inside there but here i already got the answer 
positive infinity. So if I have a negative uh, values from the left hand side of negative one, so again I'm going to put in imagine all these numbers negative left hand side of negative one, put inside here. Do I get a positive or a negative infinity? So here I got a negative infinity. So you, you have two methods. Either you just use the value and you imagine it putting it inside there carefully, okay? Or you put build table, all right? Or you can just key in, choose a few numbers, okay, and key in into the calculator and then see whether you get positive values or negative values. So it has to be either positive infinity or negative infinity. Just set it carefully. All right. Next one, I'm going to do for the second one because here in the denominator, I got two value of x. Okay, I'm going to check for the negative ones. If you want to pause the video and check whether you get positive infinity or negative infinity, you can do so. I'm going to go and make myself disappear again for a while. Ta -da. All right. So now I have a limit x moving to two, uh, moving coming from two from the right hand side. So I create negative infinity. Then I have x coming from from uh, two from the left hand side. I get positive infinity. So I confirm that I have x equals to negative 1 and x equals to 2 as my vertical asymptote. Next thing is I need to test whether I have a horizontal asymptote or an oblique one. So for here, my numerator is less. The degree of numerator is less than the degree of denominator. So the trick that I told you is the limit is going to be zero, but zero, top of zero or bottom of zero. So you just imagine the number is very, very big. Okay. So you put inside here and here, you are going to get positive answer on top and positive answer at the bottom. Okay. So if let's say if the number is super, super big, if it minus with 2, so the effect is it is still going to be a positive number. And if you have positive number here, you still will get a positive value there. Okay, so you will get put 0 from the right hand side. Means it's on top of 0. Whatever answer you get is going to be bigger than 0. Okay, next one. Let's test this. Okay make myself coming let's come back right let's test the second one let's see if you have a negative infinity so you you imagine there's going to be a lot of negative numbers okay from the uh, negative x moving to negative infinity so there's going to be a lot of negative numbers going on so you're going to put in one by one and you will notice that the answer that you get is always less than zero Okay, so therefore we confirm y equals to zero is the horizontal asymptote. Okay, the next thing that we need to do is to create some coordinates. Okay, so I look at the second part of the question. They say find the points where the curve intersect the x-axis and the y-axis. So I just follow the question if it intersect the y-axis, then x is equal to 0, then I calculate it. it. When the curve intersect y, x-axis, y equals to 0, then I calculate can calculate it also. No problem. Right, the intersection point is done. Then determine the turning point of this curve and state its nature. Means you want when dy dx equals to zero and they want to know whether is it a max or a mean. So I will set it in nicely. Okay, I will set it in nicely and know my di uh, differentiate the equation. Right, once I in differentiated it by using the quotient rule, then I will check for the turning point. When dy dx equals to zero, I will create my answer. Okay, so here I will know that 
there will be two values of x okay let me move myself there okay there will be two value of x which will create two values like that okay so now i and i use the x equals to one and x equals to five to calculate my y also so to i use the values to calculate the value of y so now i know my coordinate but i still do not know whether these coordinates are creating maximum minimum or inflection point so remember that okay to be able to create that so what i'm going to do is i can either do the second derivative test or the first derivative test i'm going to go for the first derivative test because i'm not going to differentiate this big guy right so i just choose a number okay and put it inside my dy dx which i calculate just now and then i just want to know whether it's a positive gradient or a negative gradient okay so and i can see that this is a minimum point moving over right next next thing is i need to find another one okay so for this case i notice that i will get a maximum value moving myself i don't know where to move myself it's okay i guess all right <laughs> so i will get over here is a maximum point all right so i got no problem with that i hope okay let's see how i create my graph okay we have two vertical asymptote one horizontal asymptote so i will mark everything nicely then i have some intersection points so i have one there over here one is a minimum point so i'm going to mark that minimum point and I have one maximum point. I'm going to mark that maximum point. And I have one intersection on the x-axis. Let's see how the arrows goes. So for limit x moving to negative 1 from the right-hand side, I get positive infinity. So this is, oops, I have a typing error there. Let me just correct it for a while for you. Okay, I have a negative infinity here, sorry. Okay, so I have a negative 1 there, right? I got a negative 1 there. So this is my x equals to negative 1. I already labeled it correctly there. So this is x equals to negative 1. And when it is coming from all the value of x is coming from the right hand side, negative one positive from the right hand side of negative one the answer i'm going to get is a positive infinity so i imagine the values going up there so i mark it as so okay next one when i have limit x moving from the left hand side of negative one so coming from the left hand side from of negative one my answer will become negative infinity means it's going to go down so i mark my arrow as so okay if i want limit of x coming from left hand side of two so i imagine all those numbers coming from the left hand side of two and then my answer is positive infinity so that is x equals to two so it's going to be very near but not touching so my arrow is as so okay like that right so it's going up next one is i want x coming from the right hand side of two and i will get negative infinity so coming from the right hand side of two i get negative infinity so i imagine the arrow going down like this okay going down so now i have already marked my arrows i have two more arrows to go which is limit going to positive infinity if limit moving to positive infinity so it's going to the right hand side there it's going over there right over there okay and then you are the arrows that is supposed to be is going to be zero 
on the bigger than zero something on top of the line y equals to zero so i put my arrow as so going to the positive infinity but it won't touch y equals to zero okay lastly i have case where limit x moving to negative infinity and i get zero left hand side means i got num uh, number which is smaller than zero so what is going to happen is at the bottom of zero going to negative infinity i get the bottom of zero okay at the lower part of this y equals to zero okay so here is the upper part zero positive all right i think you can see the shape of the graph already from here right so this type of technique actually they can draw any type of graph you will love it i believe me you will love it okay once you measure this uh this type of uh, technique with your limit which you learned in chapter one you will be able to draw any type of graph so let's sketch the graph Ta -da! okay the graph is out okay so you will get the curve following the arrow let me show you again see we can actually see it there so you just follow the arrow and you sketch your graph with all the maximum value and the uh, minimum value and all the intersection all marked nicely so you can actually have a beautiful graph okay now label your graph to get all the full marks okay to get the full marks you have to have to label all the coordinates all the intersection point all the asymptote and also the main uh function of the graph you have to name the graph okay so that's from me today i hope you enjoy the lesson and i will see you in my next video bye so how was it do you like what you see well if you do please hit the subscribe button and give me a like to support me teacher im to do more videos for you and i hope in my next lesson you will get more values from me if you need any videos like so please click on it bye see you next time